What up, everybody? Welcome back to Pro Publications YouTube channel. The channel to talk about zines and DIY publishing. And today we're looking at Evil Ernie, a black and white kind of splatter punk comic that I think doesn't get enough love. I know a lot of metalheads know about this, but the Evil Ernie Lady Death story, the Chaos Comics universe, was one of my favorites growing up. These came out in like 91 and 92. This is the Evil Ernie run that was on EC Comics, also known as Eclipse Comics. That company was owned by Malibu Comics. And so this came out in 91, 92. It's the first five issues, the first arc of Evil Ernie. Basically his origin story. There's a lot of things that, you know, I just found real funny as I reread this. And uh, yeah, just in case you guys are wondering, FTW, Brian Fulito, uh signed my own copy. But uh, dedication... But uh, the man of the hour for me is honestly Stephen Hughes. To my son, Chance, Kid Chaos. This artist is amazing. And uh, this art and this comic book really had a big impact on me. And I think it's why I sought out more black and white comics and really got into it. This was kind of like the entry gateway for me in that world. And a lot of that is because of Stephen Hughes' art. Uh, another thing that really hit me with Stephen Hughes was I didn't know that he was a person of color but at the comic book shop one of the guys there who knew me was always trying to put like certain comics in my hands and so like he was one of the ones that really got me into Jim Lee because he was always like Jim Lee's a person of color he's Asian peep him out Stephen Hughes is another one where, where he was like bro like you got to read this thing and uh and he really you know he really put me up on game on who that artist was but the writing in this, I like. I know a lot of people have made fun of the, the writing, but there's a lot of things that just works well, right? So this character here has abandonment issues, has, you know, trauma instilled in him because the people that were supposed to love and take care of him didn't. And it's really a sad story because the hero is also the villain. The hero in this story is is a person looking for love, which is Ernest Fairchild. And then the villain in this is a person looking for love, which is Ernest Fairchild. And so because of love, he does a lot of horrible things. And that's kind of the subtext to this character. And that's kind of the through line throughout all the evil Ernie's is that his motivation is that he's a person that dealt with abandonment issues. He finally gets someone that's nice to him, which is Lady Death. She tells him, I would love you if you do these things for me. And then he does these things that are just horrible and toxic. That is pretty much the premise in a nutshell. Never mind that there's other subplots, but that is, for the most part, the subtext that's through the whole series. So the way this story progresses is basically Evil Ernie lives in his own head. He's already murdered 50 people. And, you know, Lady Death has kind of guided him in that route. And Lady Death is a very cool character that I pulled out all my evil earnings, so we might check out some more of this stuff. But this character here, she has a really great arc as well. She's this kind of like manipulative character who's using Ernest Fairchild. She's using evil Ernie, doesn't care about him. But then towards the end, realizes that she does care about him and realizes that she can have a happy ending. And they could be together. And then... And then the Chaos Universe comes to an end. It's a really, really good story, actually. And we'll, and we'll probably read the Armageddon series, too, man. I'm a big fan of these comics, so. And I didn't know this, but uh, I heard, and I'm just going to say it out there. I heard it on Cartoonist Kayfabe that this was originally supposed to be a movie script. Which, once they said that, now that I reread it, I'm like, oh, yeah, I can see all the movie tropes. Like, this would be the grisly... Uh, you know, character like the Michael Myers doctor character who tried to fix Ernie but just made things worse. And then you get this new kid, this hot gun. She's coming in. She thinks she knows better. And she thinks that her device is going to fix him. But where the doctor's first device is actually how Ernest Fairchild was able to meet Lady Death. This next one's gonna do something very, very different. 
right? So that's the plan. That's where this uh, first arc ends off, where the old doctor is like, you can't. And she's like, yeah, it's going to be simple. We're just going to cure him. Look at that art. So, you know, I breeze through that origin story because the art is not bad at all. It's very fun. But on this issue, good Lord, these things really uh, turn up. So to begin with, opening shot. Every time they see Datum, he's able to travel into Lady Death's uh, portion of hell, as you find out later on in the series. So she's basically asking him, like, hey, if I was to give you immense power, you know, what would you do for me? And then he shows her him raiding the, the White House and all this stuff and basically destroying the, the world. One of those 80s uh, movie tropes of like, you can never trust the bureaucrats. You gotta be this hard-boiled vigilante. Like I said, now that, you know, Cartoonist k mentioned that this was a movie script, I'm like, oh yeah, I can, I can see this, definitely. When I was young, reading this, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine that. The total recall machine right here. So for these characters, this is there's this idea of like history repeating itself, right? So this was his machine that was supposed to fix him, but actually just introduced him to Lady Death and uh, made him go on a rampage and murdering people. This is her machine that's supposedly going to fix Ernie. Dr. Cracks, he's like, hell nah. This is straight up out of Michael Myers, Michael Myers rip. But uh, Dr. Snap says, no, we can't allow this to go on. We can't allow this character to live. We got to put him out of his misery. So, you know, Dr. trying to get rid of him. I like this panel too. See the eyeballs closing. Tries to kill him. Doesn't pan out. They're like, this damn sick doctor, he finally snapped. Here goes Ernest. Look at this guy. Just chilling. Hella happy. I love this sequence. But here comes Lady Death. Wake up, silly boy. It's time. Here you go. With great power comes great responsibility to those you love. Come to me. So as she pushes the button, they kiss. And something goes horribly wrong. Look at that panel. So from this point forward, this comic goes from zero to a hundred. All right. And it starts with this button and this, this very touching little lovely story with the lady, right? I was going to give you this when you got better. Everything could have been so nice, and you would have lived happily ever after. And he wakes up. Presents. Leather. Lovely leather. I, I, I'm glad you, you like it. Look at the way he rips this girl's head off. Ernie loves it. Look at that art, man. Tell me that wasn't fucking beast mode. And when you talk about like Walking Dead stuff, like now that I've reread this, I'm like, oh yeah, Robert Kirkman completely ri ripped this from the comics. And so then what ends up happening in the story here is that anyone that Ernie kills becomes a zombie, is tied to him kind of uh, telepathically. And so his mission becomes their mission. So then the next issue, look at this one, sheesh, I love the way he was doing the hair too man, I, I've always tried to get that hair the way he gets it, I'm just unable to. Look at 
this double page splash. That's hella good, man. Look at that. So at this point, the two doctors who were kind of reluctant to work with each other realized that something went wrong. They realized that basically they all have their own fault in the creation of this person and that they need to basically right the wrong. The bureaucrats are obviously not happy that things went wrong and are already contemplating on how to finesse the situation. This is definitely would have been like one of those 80s montages where like they're suiting up for the battle. You know, we've seen it in Lost Boys, Freddy Krueger, all kinds of movies. All right, all this for love, all for Lady Death. If anybody finds this thing and you want to know why the human race was wiped out, it was for love. Blam, the epitaph of humanity. Love conquers all. Right, so like the thorough line is always all of this for love. It's it's about, it's a love story and, and what a person would do for someone that he loves and how that power of love can be manipulated to get you to do what you otherwise would not do. I love the way he drew Lady Death's hair as well. Like Stephen Hughes is one of those like, man, in a different era, easily see him doing, you know, the Inhumans, seeing how he does. This is like, like, I would love to see the way he would do Medusa, you know? That would be beast mode. Yeah, look at all this. And some of this stuff, it looks like they're using dual shade, but I'm gonna be honest, they don't get nowhere near as, as good as the TMNT kind of dual shade. But nonetheless, the homies are, you know, just hella good. You kind of fall into some uh, zombie tropes. You got to shoot them in the head. And, and then this thing actually makes a little more sense. You have to shoot them in the head to break the connection that they have with evil Ernie's mind telepathically. This is kind of, look at this art. He's beefy right there. Look at this one. Sheesh. For love. Like, I, I'm telling you, like, it's throughout the whole series, five issues, and even the other ones, all the time. For love. What wouldn't I do for love? This is funny. Because... When I first read these comics as a young man, I didn't know what Stephen Hughes looked like. Now we have the power of the internet, right? And, and I've gotten to know Stephen Hughes' work more in depth. You know, his family, they own the rights to Evil Ernie, which Dynamite now publishes. And uh, I got the first complete, the first two runs on Dynamite I've collected. And I don't know how many more they've done since. But he literally put, he gave himself a cameo in here. So like, this is him over here, older. Tell me that, that that doesn't look like what he would look like, like a young man. So that's so funny that he put himself in the comic. There was a better picture of him. That forehead, that's him right there, man. I love this too. Evil Ernie is one of those characters that like, through Stephen Hughes' hands, you could picture him like in a Western. Look at this, you know, like a straight up gun battle happening. Look at... Look at this whole sequence, it's just so good. Explosions, fire, gunfights. And this is funny too, he's always trying to get laid. Cause you gotta remember, in this story, in the timeline, you know, he's probably like in his early 20s. Been in jail since he was maybe eight or nine. So like, you know, homie's kind of a horn dog. But for this gal that he really loves. So he's always trying to get some. And then something's always stopping him, right? He's about to finally get to that point, that victory lap that he wants. And it's like, knock, knock. He's like, you better go get that. 
He's like, ah, oh, shit. Whoever it is, I'm about to, I'm about to put the paws on you. So in this story, Evil Ernie has a plan, a trajectory. You guys saw the beginning where he was like, I'm gonna go to the White House and do this thing. So he gets shot in the head by this female character doctor that basically was uh, one half of what created Evil Ernie, or I guess one third of it, and. Uh, and she shoots him in the head. And because of that, this guy goes on a complete side mission. You know, he's like, I'm going to make you suffer, sucker. And the way I'm going to make you suffer is by killing your family. Lady Death is mad because she's like, no, nah, we have a plan. There's something you need to take care of. This is not that thing. Right? Like, we, I need you to stay focused, homie. But he's like, nah, I, I'm upset. Like, I got to go do this thing. Right? And by this point, the... You know, his original murders, everything that he's killed thus far since becoming Evil Ernie has gone and killed more things. And so, like, this onslaught of just murder has began to trickle. And now it's on the news and everything, and the army is trying to close up the space, but they broke through it, and it's just spreading. And what they're thinking it is, is like this psycho kind of rabies for humans that's turning normal human beings, you know, into like rabbit, you know, cavemen. Not realizing that they're actually dead. So they get to the house. She comes out. She's explaining, to, you know, Evil Ernie, like, no, man, you need to stay focused, homie. We got a plan, like, hustle up, you know? But the doctor shows up and lays his ass out. And once they, you know, once they blow up Eva Ernie, right, she's over here sad, crying for him. But once they blow him up, all the, all the other beings that were dead who were connected to him uh, telepathically, you know, they become, you know, inanimate again. And then you get this piece of shit bureaucrat who picks up Smiley and pricks himself on it. And next thing you know... Dun, dun, dun. What's going to happen there, huh? Got to see the Stephen Hughes sketchbook. All this is from 92. Lady Death. Look at this stuff. I have a Lady Death swimsuit edition, too. I love the way he drew the gums, too, on the teeth. And like I said, the way he drew hair, man, fucking so good. Look at this. You could tell it was all pencil art too. This one's tight. This is fun too, right? Chaos Archive. On the following pages, you will find thumbnail sketches for Evil Ernie number one, which feature a different dream probe sequence and a different introduction for Lady Death. Enough said. So in this one, the parents are like these huge beings looming over him. They pick him up almost like a rodent. He's being forced to eat a rodent. Here comes Lady Death. Coming this way. See it going that way. Blood drenched. He wakes up from the probe. Happy. Still knocked out. Daydreaming. Evil Ernie is the most twisted horror character since Freddy Krueger. He's a wicked and wonderful creation. Fangoria. This uh, Evil Ernie was one of those comics, like I said, that when I picked it up as a young man, I was floored, man. And a lot of this art really spoke to me. And if you've never read an Evil Ernie comic, you know, for reals, read one. But all right, guys, that's all I got for you guys today, man. Check out Evil Ernie if you haven't already. Beyond that, don't forget to check out your boys Underground comic book zine anthology called feral comics issue 17 is now out link will be in the show notes for you guys to peep this out get a single issue if not go ahead and get a year subscription all right guys beyond that go ahead and like share and subscribe to the channel lates